Hello everyone, and welcome to Diagnostics by Rick. Because I expect some new scope users will be watching this channel, I have a couple of warnings and some advice for you guys that are new to oscilloscopes, and maybe even for some of you that have been using one for a while. First, know your oscilloscope's voltage limitations. If you open your new Pico and decide to look at the voltage from a wall outlet, you might just have bought yourself a very expensive wheel chalk. It's been done before. I'm sure you already know the kind of voltage secondary ignition can put out. But what about primary ignition? Do you know that the control side of an ignition coil can hit hundreds of volts? Don't do that to your scope. Attenuators are available so that you can connect higher voltage circuits safely to your oscilloscope if you need to. I know that an automotive text nature is to throw away the manual and try and figure out things on your own. We tend to just like build things without instruction manuals. Don't do this with your new scope. You need to understand how your scope works so you don't break it. You also need to be aware of how the scope's grounds are connected internally, if they are connected. With the older 4423 like this one here, you should never connect more than one ground. You should only ground one channel at a time, never two or more. Grounding more can cause a ground loop and actually damage the scope. With the newer Pico, the 4425, you have to ground each channel if you want a good signal. So make sure you understand how your scope works. Take a look through the manual. You may be asking how this can happen if two or more wires are just connected to ground. Well, just because a vehicle is, or part of a vehicle is supposed to be at ground does not mean it has the same voltage potential as another ground point. Resistance between the two ground points can be significant, and the voltage potential can be significant, even though it's supposed to be an actual ground. Try measuring the voltage between the case of the alternator and the body of a car with the engine running. Now, turn on your lights, turn on your AC, really load the system up, see how high the voltage will go. On some systems, you can get up there to around a volt. Your scope is designed to measure voltage. It's not designed any significant amounts of current to flow through it. So even a small amount of current could potentially damage the scope. If you tried to ground both channels to the same place, you could still inadvertently put the two connections in places with different voltage potential. Let's say you attach them both to a bracket, but you inadvertently attach one of them to the bracket and one to the bolt holding the bracket. Well, the bolt and the bracket may have a different voltage potential. So just know your scope and know how you're supposed to ground it. If it says only ground one channel, only ground one channel. That's all you need. If it says you have to ground each channel individually, then you need to do that. Treat your scope nicely, and it will do the same to you. Also, pay attention to where you physically set the box down. A few years ago, I had an employee call me upset because his brand new Pico was broken. The readings were all over the place, even though he wasn't even connected to anything. The first thing I asked him was, Where's your scope sitting? Is it sitting on the battery with the engine running? Because that will cause erratic operation. He said, no, I'm sitting in the car and the scope's inside the car with me. So we tried switching USB cables, tried restarting his laptop in case it was some kind of weird software issue, but the readings were still very erratic. So I finally went back to where exactly is the scope sitting? He said, it's in the passenger floor. I said, directly on the floor? He said, no, it's sitting on this guy's lunch, I think. It's a Tupperware container. So I thought about it for a minute, and I said, just try to move the scope. Pick it up and put it in the seat. Instantly, the problem was fixed. Incredulously, he said, um, how did that fix it? Well, he opened up the Tupperware container. It was full of about five pounds of magnets. Placing the box too close to a magnetic field or wiring that can cause a magnetic field, or any wire that carries large amounts of current, like maybe a, a 
power feed to an aftermarket amplifier in the trunk or something along those lines, they can carry enough current, create a magnetic field, which can disrupt your scope's operation. So pay attention to where you're setting. Some of the best advice I can give is don't start using your oscilloscope on a broken vehicle. If you're new to scopes, start with good vehicles. Practice on as many good vehicles as you can every day. It's hard to know what bad is if you don't even know what good looks like. The biggest mistake new scope users make is overanalyzing a waveform. In the beginning, you only need to be looking for gross errors. In time, with experience and a lot of practice, you'll learn to pick up on the smaller details. Finally, and this is probably the biggest of all, use your scope. Use it every day. Even if it's just 10 minutes, even if it's just on one car, connect it to something every day. The more you practice, the better you'll get. Well, I hope this helps save at least one oscilloscope from a terrible fate. Do me a favor and hit that thumbs up and subscribe button. Also, if you'd like to support this channel, visit my Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day.